our next two sessions um, is actually going to be um, has a moderator for it. And um, let me first introduce our first session. Um, this next session is actually entitled From Schoolwork to Teamwork, From Teamwork to Dreamwork. Wow, fantastic title. Um, for this session, our speaker is Mr. Ethan Tan, who is the co-founder of Imigo, uh, Imago Malaysia and has been a pioneer in the video communication workspace for multiple cutting-edge technology companies throughout his career. Um, and then the next session after his is actually entitled Technology, Learning and Impact. We have with us Mr. Giancarlo Brotto, who is a global education catalyst from Smart Technologies based in Canada. He engages with government officials, policy influencing um, organizations, thought leaders, school system decision makers and researchers to gain insights and influence trends in the educa education sector. He is a catalyst for those who don't just want to talk about change, but want to do their part to make it a reality. So um, the session will also, like I mentioned, be moderated by Mr. Stephen Lowe, the Senior Sales Director, Head of Relationship Segment, Lenovo Malaysia. So um, over to you. Uh, it will be actually Mr. Ethan. Then after that, it will be straight followed by Mr. Giancarlo. Then uh, Mr. Stephen Lowe will take over for the moderating session. Okay, over to you. Welcome to Queen Lai International Secondary School. I'm Chris Ng, the principal. I am also an educator. Education today is an investment, just as you invest in your child's education. We invest in the physical infrastructure, the academic systems, the technology, and above all, the teachers to ensure the best learning environment for your child. We are the first smart school to endorse Imago's smart classroom solutions. Its all-in-one system is ideal with its smart wireless sharing, collaborative digital whiteboard, and the Imago Flash blended learning solution for an online experience. We are ready to serve your child in and out of the classroom. We would like our students to develop an informed curiosity and a passion for learning. Hi, my name is Ethan, the co-founder of Imago. We specialize in smart classroom solutions. I would like to talk about education. Well, education has always been slow to adopt new methodologies. However, the educational system has been urged to keep pace and is making great strides to embrace technology. Well, it needs to. Students today demand education that help them acquire the skill needed for 21st century jobs, whether pre or post pandemic. We need to keep up. The most recent crisis was no different, in which teachers were forced to adapt quickly to a sudden switch from in person to remote teaching, combined with a sense of isolation brought about by the new social distancing guidelines, the SOP, the budget cuts, the fear for their own health and safety. This significantly increased teacher stress level and lower the job satisfaction. When difficult times arrive, no one can be certain whether their job can be safe. I could lose my job, you could lose yours, and teachers are no exception. The prospect of job loss can negatively affect the teacher morale and result in a noticeable drop off in performance. With the vaccination program underway, academic institutions are now opening their doors for students to come back to campus. The question now is whether hybrid teaching will continue post-COVID-19. As school plans to reopen strategies, there are more questions than ever. Will blended learning work for all students and teachers? Or will some parents opt to keep their children at home? Are teachers prepared to deliver high-quality blended learning? Even way before the pandemic, the education system has been lived with issues like teacher shortages, the inequality in education, and the pandemic has served to further exacerbate this problem. The biggest problem with having to shift to remote learning practically overnight is that not every school is technology equipped. Not every teacher are IT literate, or I should say mostly, they are not to handle such a transition. While some schools were able to make the switch relatively easy or require under a week to train their teachers, 
roll out the remote learning and implement the student support services. The lack of access to technology or expertise means that others were unable to do the same even months into the pandemic. Well, I believe you can feel the pain as educator. There was a TikTok video went viral recently where a teacher turned his mosaic tile floors into the whiteboard while he was demonstrating his math equation. Where he was unable to do it from his laptop during an online class. Many of the teacher also experienced bad echoing during the online class or the camera is out of focus merely because of lack of the IT knowledge. Clearly, online time cannot provide many of the informal social interaction students have at school. But how will online course do in terms of moving student learning forward? In the hybrid classroom, educators may have more distraction and less oversight, which can reduce their motivation in comparison of online and in-person class. However, hybrid are not as effective as in-person class for most students. I believe teachers have to agree with that. Students assigned to the online option also rated their class as more difficult than did their peers assigned to the face-to-face -face option. But always lack of communication in face-to-face -face with the instructor disrupt the student response. The Imago EduBot is designed to immerse the student with their local or remote teacher, offering all the means to conduct course in the most practical, interactive and visual ways. The teacher can benefit from the Imago EduBot from content sharing, he or she can send a presentation to the student in the video screen, the main display, and the far side video participants. The Imago EduBot comes with an embedded smart present option, allowing the teacher to show any document natively from any of their device. When students are interacting in an e-learning section, the main camera will automatically track them, and the teacher can allow their student to display the student content on the main screen. In addition, the teacher can benefit from a classroom management system to monitor and control the student screen and offer a personal assistant. Each student can benefit from a personal retractable screen or tablet to easily view and interact with the teacher content, creating a ready infrastructure for hybrid learning applications. If the class is in hybrid mode, each student can request to talk with the remote teacher and appear on the main display while raising hand upon getting the teacher approval. When a teacher is showing the content on the main interactive display, a student can step to the board to annotate his idea or simply do so from his personal screen or tablet. Both the teacher annotation from the edu board and the student one can simultaneously be shared with the far end side during a video call. The paradigm of education shifted nearly overnight due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Many schools immediately embraced full remote learning for the remainder of the 2019 to 20 school years. Thanks to Imago Flash, our designated concurrent teaching tools, it's easier for teachers to schedule separate sessions for online and in-person learners in a hybrid model and take control over both concurrent teaching. Share your pre-record videos, easily share your YouTube videos as your material of teachings. You are in control of your virtual breakout room, just like you would circulate the classroom, checking in with groups, asking follow-up questions, clearing up student confusion and more. Try to spend a little quality time with each group during the breakout session. Stay involved and attentive. Apart from seeing your student attending remotely, the tools to provide opportunity for teachers to still engage with their students and ensure that the students are paying attention. Our core editing or annotating allow the student and teacher to work on the same page while driving the engagement and making sure they are concentrating during the class. Additionally, by gathering the data about a student learning process, we do provide polling features that allow the teacher to gather the feedback or data as their teaching guidance. After all, all the entire concurrent teaching with interactive can be recorded to any of your designated storage, regardless it's your own learning management system, your cloud drive, or locally. We are not going to tell you how to teach, but we will give you the flexibility that you need in software, in platforms, in operating system. You get to decide what works for you. After all, you know best what your student needs. You need technology in every classroom and in every student and teacher hands because it is the pen and paper of our time and it is the lens through which we experience much of our world. One thing which is certain with Imago, your student will not be learning to work with a system that may no longer exist in 10 years. They will learn the technical skill that require to master any program now and in the future. From schoolwork to teamwork, from teamwork to dreamwork,
Hi, my name is John Carlo. I'm from Toronto, Canada, and 20 years ago, I taught in one of Ontario's first fully digital schools, uh, and since then have been working with schools, school systems, and countries across the globe, uh, helping them transition to digital. And, you know, I've been so fortunate to be in different parts of the world, and every time I do a workshop and work with uh, leaders, I always ask this question, which, what are the challenges uh, that technology has in education? And it doesn't matter whether I'm in uh, Ireland or India or Australia or Malaysia or North or South America, the answers I get can always be categorized into one of these four categories. They either relate with infrastructure management, we don't have the access, the Wi-Fi, the devices, or having to do with leadership and planning, or uh, the technology. Is it connected to the types of practices we want in our classrooms? Or, or uh, oh my goodness, do our teachers ever need the supports in, in the classroom? And so these are four categories that consistently come up time and time again. Now, uh, the past few years have been fortunate uh, to be part of Catalyst, where they've been convening uh, school system and government leaders from a variety of places around the world, uh, over 100 countries. And they've been asking questions around and engaging these leaders in dialogue. And last year was especially interesting uh, because before where the conversations were face to face, last year they were all done remotely and all are related to the topic of what people were dealing with as a result of the pandemic. Now, I want to share some of the insights that came out from these conversations from last year and make a connection for you. So one of the immediate things uh, that came up was, of course, uh, the impact that school closures have had on children and families alike, as well the impact it's had on teachers, some being more comfortable embracing new technologies and new models of learning, others finding it challenging. At the same time, this realization that equity needs to be at the forefront of the work we do in education. Of course, access is not uh, equal throughout. Uh, some learners had access to devices and network infrastructure. Others engaged via radio, radio and television. Regardless of the access though, what was the quality of the learning and making sure that the quality was sustained no matter what uh, the access looked like? And that was a challenge uh, throughout many parts of the world. Now, connected to that, was um, this concept of maintaining or capturing students' attention, especially when learners are at home and they're ready distractions. That was a common theme uh, that we heard. Uh, and as well, uh, connected and very, uh, very poignant, uh, both with teachers and with students, was this concept of connections and the importance of the pedagogical uh, connections between teachers and learners and between learners and each other, uh, which was missed this past year, was a critical part of what the learning process was for learners and also uh, for educators. And for educators, of course, there was such variability with their comforts with technology. The, the concept of supports uh, was especially uh, true uh, this past year. Now, the silver lining in all of this was this spirit that we have learned new models, new ways, new platforms, new technologies that could be integrated into how regular school works. And so there was this conversation around how we take these learnings and these insights and define new ways in which we engage our learners, new flexible models that might incorporate some in person and some online. And this, I think, is a positive step forward for us uh, in education. Now, there's a parallel between these conversations that I've been having many years ago and the conversations that were had this year in that they're aligned and they're paralleled, right? So we, we talked about the supports uh, for teachers. We talked about the connectivity between, you know, access uh, and equity. Uh, as well is true the importance of connections and technologies being uh, uh, supporters or enablers of uh, these connections. And of course, uh, how that all needs to be connected together in a strategic plan that actually gets rolled out and has the impact that it's intended. And that's really where we need to go now because more, much more of the world now has access to technology, is now incorporating it, there's more funding towards it. But we know we haven't yet addressed those challenges. They still persist, they still remain. And so how do we improve technology's impact in education? Well, 
it means that we have to have conversations around these themes. Now, uh, about four or five years ago, Smart Technologies commissioned some research to look at schools and districts that were already having success integrating technologies. And they asked, what are the frameworks or the models that you use, that you looked at? And they let, mentioned a variety of different organizations. When you looked at all, when we looked at all of those, what we noticed was their common themes, 22 in fact, common characteristics between all of them. And these are 22 things that we should be having conversations about. Now, what SMART did is actually turn that into a series of questions that any of you can take uh, and it, through an assessment uh, and it's completely free. And what it'll do is you can compare how you respond related to others, specifically others in your school. So if you're a teacher, uh, compare yourself to other teachers, compare it to the principal, compare it to other system leaders. And what you get is a picture of how your e school ecosystem um, is doing related to each of the different categories. What areas need improvement and what areas that you're already succeeding in. And what it's intended to do is be a conversation starter so that we make sure we don't overlook all these different pieces that it takes to make sure that technology has impact. Now, uh, we don't have much time left together, but I do want to unpack one concept which is super important. It's been important in the past, especially important now, was making sure that the technologies we select and that we use are uh, at a foundation serving certain practices, teaching and learning practices that had value. Now, in order to do that though, we have to have an underlying understanding of well, what is learning and then what are the practices that support that learning and what technologies would be best used to enable that. And in a very oversimplified way, I'm going to define three things in terms of what learning is. Uh, the first is uh, this concept of prior knowledge. The second element is that of attention. And the third is the concept of memory. Now, all our learners come with different experiences and that shapes what their prior knowledge is and it shapes how they react to the new knowledge that we give them. We have to be attuned to that. Now, they only react because they're attentive and we all know attention spans vary. So how do we maintain attention? And of course, uh, once they maintain attention, their ability to store it into long-term memory is dependent on how actively engaged we get them with the learning. Now, the best way to un understand this is to experience it. So I'm going to give you an example of what this could look like. Uh, this could be a teacher in a classroom with a, a smart panel, a smart board in the room, or it could be projected, or this could be done remotely with the teacher's modeling. Regardless, you have students select how many different apples they want. If a student comes up to the board, they can write the numbers. Another one could write this number. It, another one could define the operation. Maybe it's online and students are calling this out. Uh, and of course, uh, other students would respond. Now, this is great. It's engaging. It's visually stimulating. Some students are involved, but it's not all students involved. And have we ma managed to uh, capture and sustain their attention and then uh, activate all of them in this learning experience? Well, what if we elevated it? So I'm going to give you another example that would ele elevate this concept. We're going to use uh, the platform Lumio by Smart Technologies. Now, what we're going to do here is the same task, but we're going to add another element to it. And maybe it's something that connects with our learners. Maybe it's something in our classroom, uh, maybe a favorite stuffy that exists in our classroom that we want to connect into this lesson, maybe something that's meaningful for our learners. So let's actually take Bali and let's put her inside the lesson. Give me a second. So here we go. I'm going to put Bali in and oh, Bali. Yes, she's inside. Okay, Bali's inside our lesson now because our students love Bali. And so we're going to use her as part of the lesson. Now, here's the thing what we're going to do. We're going to take this lesson and we're actually going to distribute it to all our learners because we want all our learners to be engaging in the learning process. Now, I'm going to show you here. I have a student, Marco. He's going to, he got the activity. He's going to start it. Now, here, all the students that are in your class will be listed. In a moment, we're going to see Marco join the stage here. And now all our learners could be engaging in the task. So, Let's say Marco is going to take uh, three uh, bollies uh, and then uh, he's going to uh, add one bolly. So there's three uh, bollies. He's going to add one bolly and he's going to end up getting uh, his uh, results, which are four, uh, four uh, bollies, and he's going to write it in there. Right. So there's Marco. He's uh, he's completed the task. Now, as you noticed, as a teacher, I can see all what all the learners are doing. Now, this is important because I might realize there's an opportunity to get feedback to Marco because he forgot 
what symbol is there. And so Marco can notice that and then he can, uh, uh, he can uh, alter uh, alternatively uh, reply or respond. Um, and this example uh, is, is something that I want to show you that highlights these key elements of how important it is to make sure we engage all our learners in the active process of whatever it is we're learning with them. We create opportunities to take the real world and what's around our learners and connect it to, to them. And of course, uh, identify that there might be gaps in some prior knowledge so and opportunities to give feedback. So that's just one example that highlights uh, one important element with pedagogy connected to technology, but there's all these other components that are uh, important as well. So with that, I encourage you, uh, you know, take the assessments completely free to do, just scan the QR code, uh, or as well, if you want to try Lumio absolutely free, uh, you can go ahead and click on that link or scan it. That's yours to try. Uh, it's been a pleasure sharing uh, some of the insight with you today, and I'll now uh, open it to questions and or, or as well, feel free to email me, be happy to respond. Okay, so Stephen, over to you. Hey, thanks, Ida. Sure. Hey, good evening to our friend from uh, Canada. Right. Jekalo, what time there now in uh, Canada? It's uh, just just 11.24 p.m., so uh, right. not, not bad time yet, but getting close. <laughs> Soon to be good morning for you, yeah? <laughs> and, and to Ethan also, good morning to you, Ethan. Right. Um, okay, the question, first one question to uh, Giancarlo, right, from... Lumio sounds very interesting. So how, how can we get more information about it? Yeah, absolutely. So you can go to uh, lum.io. That's a Lumio uh, landing page, and you can get, get started started uh, right away uh, with it. Uh, it's complimentary, so free free to use. Uh, and uh, But if you want to learn more, there's actually a webinar uh, we're having uh, for uh, In Your Time Zone, and that's on August uh, 5th, uh, and that's at 11 a.m., and that's uh, uh, Singapore time, uh, Kuala Lumpur time. Um, and what's going to happen there is they're going to do a little deeper dive into uh, getting started with Lumio, kind of introduction of it, a live demo, uh, also how it integrates with, uh, some of you might be using Zoom or Google Meets or uh, Microsoft uh, Teams, uh, and also more importantly, showing examples of how it can be used in a blended or hybrid learning uh, scenario. Uh, so what we'll do is I'll, I'll drop a link to the uh, registration. It's absolutely free to register. So for those people that want to uh, learn more, uh, they can be sure uh, to do that. And I'm gonna drop it in the Zoom. Great. Uh, great. And I'll also drop it in the uh, Facebook Live so folks can uh, can register for it. Yeah, great, great. So, all right. Uh, next question to you and uh, to Ethan as well is um, how to ensure keeping students to concentrate and, um, of course, uh, staying focused and stay interactive while they are studying remotely from home? Maybe um, you could answer first, then followed by Ethan. Yeah, sure. You know, I think the key, and it started off with that first video, is, is connection. So, you know, if you're an educator, and you know, it'll vary what types of uh, technologies or maybe lack of technologies you have to engage your learners. But the more that you're able to connect your learner to the to to what you're doing, the better. And that could be as simple as creating space and time for learners to have a conversation with each other, allowing learners to take elements of their you know their home environment or wherever it is that they're learning and bring it into their learning. Uh, that's a key a key part. Of it. So I would say, you know, maintaining interest is really around pulling the learner into whatever it is that you're doing. And so finding opportunities where you create space for the learners to be connected with their peers and with you in dialogue um, is a key, uh, a key way of thinking, key mentality to think about. And that's regardless of what technology uh, you might be using in the classroom. All right, great. So uh, Ethan, how about um, from Imago side, how, how does the concentration um, to keep students um, be concentrated on. Yeah, um, I believe the answer should be uh, collaboration and engagement. Uh, whenever we actually conducted the hybrid classroom, uh, the ease of use uh, is the focus. And also at the same time, uh, the students should be able to actually engage the teacher and collaborate with the teachers uh, during the hybrid classroom. All right. So, That's okay. Yeah. Like collaboration, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, Ethan, to, to the question to you again, and how, how simple is it for educators without um, IT knowledge to use Imago EduBot and also some of your Imago technologies? How, how simple will it be? Okay, well, uh, in the matter of fact, they don't need any IT knowledge. And uh, the best part is uh, they don't even have to call their IT administrator to be here 
to always stand by for them during the hybrid classroom. Uh, whenever they actually walk into the classroom, our this our system has actually decided to be ease of use. By one single click, they will be able to actually join the hybrid classroom. And by bringing their own device only, they will be able to actually share any of their content without having to look for the categories. And at the same time, the student who actually with the offline or on the remote side will be able to actually collaborate, engage, and also uh, to be able to engage the teacher at the same time without any hassle. All right. So yeah. another question for you on the hybrid classroom. How yeah. to um, efficiently conduct a hybrid classroom with uh, Imago solutions? Can you elaborate further on that? Well, efficiently, in the matter of fact, they don't have to do anything. Uh, our system are uh, actually set up uh, the way whenever they walk into the classroom, uh, the camera will automatically looking at them. And at the same time, we have double uh, multi-camera just for information. We have another cameras actually looking at the offline student. And uh, at the same time, the students who are actually coming from the remote side will be able to feel that they are virtually in the classroom where they will be able to actually see their friends at the side. And also at the same time, they will be able to actually engage the teachers during the hybrid classroom. Oh, all right. All right. That's great. So, all right. Uh, back to our friend to, um, from Canada. Right. <laughs> so, what, what, uh, what are your suggestions on uh, how... Um, education leaders like uh, even my maybe a uh, school principals supporting teachers to learn new skills and technologies um, to overcome challenge from this, uh, especially during this pandemic. So, what 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 would you suggest on those? Yeah, I think you know something a practice that I've seen uh, work pretty well uh, in in multiple countries around the world, and this is regardless of uh, regardless of context. Uh, and it's something Hannah spoke about earlier when she talked about professional learning networks, right? So any opportunities where if you're an administrator, you're creating spaces for your educators to come together uh, to work with each other, uh, that's the key, right? And if you ever see an educator working in isolation, you know, your grade three teachers trying to build their lessons by themselves and they're struggling, you know, you need to pair them up. You need to connect them to other grade three educators, whether they're in their same school or in other schools. And it's it's when educators are working together that you see some incredible things happening. And that's what we've seen during the pandemic, whether it's through WhatsApp, through phones, uh, through, you know, uh, Zoom calls, you know, the educators that came together, shared resources, shared knowledge. Uh, they're the ones that really, uh, uh, you know, uh, help themselves through the, some some difficult times. Uh, and I think that's the way forward uh, uh, for administrators that are looking to uh, uh, to support their learners and their and their educators alike. All right. Great. Right. Um, thanks for your uh, for sharing from um, both uh, Giancarlo and also from Ethan. Um, with that, uh, we will end this session. I'll pass back to Aida.